Good evening and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Tonight we continue our series of Commitment 2022 debates. Up tonight, one of the most important Senate races in the state of Louisiana. We're talking about Senate District 5. It makes up a grand portion of New Orleans, uptown, downtown, Central City, Treme, the Warehouse District. This seat was most recently represented by State Senator Karen Carter-Peterson or former State Senator Karen Carter-Peterson. She abruptly resigned and has since pled guilty to raiding campaign war chests to fund her gambling addiction. Two people have qualified to run for this seat. Both Democrats, both from New Orleans, both very familiar faces to people in New Orleans. They are State Representative Royce DuPlessis and State Representative Mandy Landry. Both of you, thanks for being here. Let's just start off with an opening statement. Each one of you all gets 60 seconds. We know that you all have very similar views. Just to point this out, your voting records in the legislature are almost identical. So we hope this debate helps separate you two and lets voters see who the best candidate is. So Representative DuPlessis, you have 60 seconds to start us off with opening statements. Thank you, Travers. And I wanna say thank you to the people of District 93 for allowing me the privilege to have served as your state representative for the past four and a half years. I also wanna say thank you to my wife, Crystal, and to my daughter, Reese, for allowing me to serve and supporting me in this journey of public service. You know, I was not intending to be involved in this campaign several months ago. This was not my plan. But when this seat became vacant, I received calls from my community. I received calls from my community that say, Royce, we need you to run for this seat. The Legislative Black Caucus, of which I'm a proud member of, say we have fought hard for equal representation and you've been an effective leader and we need you to run for this seat. I had a conversation with former state Senator Diana Bajwa, who once held this seat. It said, Royce, this is bigger than you. We need you to run for this seat. I am answering the call for effective representation, for equal representation, and I'm asking for your service, for, to allow me to serve. All right, Representative Plessis, thank you. Representative Landry, you have 60 seconds. Thanks. Hello, everyone. My name is Mandy Landry. I represent District 91 in New Orleans. The district stretches from Holly Grove down to the Garden District. It is incredibly diverse. When I was elected in 2019, the district was and is majority female and majority African-American voters. I knocked on doors, I met people, they trusted me, they liked me, they voted for me, they believed in me. One of the main reasons I'm running this year is one of the main reasons I ran in 2019, which is women's health and reproductive rights. Women are under attack nationwide, people telling you what you can and can't do with your body. And I'm, as a longtime lawyer prior to being elected, I worked for an abortion clinic, excuse me, I represented an abortion clinic, a fertility clinic and women seeking abortions. Right now is the most critical time in our country for women's health care issues, and our state legislature does not have and has never had someone with my experience and knowledge on those issues. I look forward to the, to the debate, and I thank you to everyone who voted for me in the past. All right, let's talk about abortion. Obviously, you all are very similar with this. You're both pro-choice. You support a women's right to an abortion. You're against the striking down of Roe. We'll start with you, Representative Landry. In 60 seconds, would you be in favor of a ballot initiative allowing voters in this state to decide Louisiana's stance on abortion rights? Yes, I would. I think with the overturn of Roe, people are understanding um, how much is at risk. I hear from uh, not just young women, older women who are worried, um, men with daughters. Unfortunately, our state does not have a ballot initiative process. We would have to change our constitution in order to have that. I have started those discussions with people. We would love to put abortion and reproductive rights on the ballot. Uh, we would love to have people vote on legalizing marijuana. We would love to have people vote throughout the state for raising the minimum wage. Reproductive rights and all of these issues are hugely popular with Louisiana residents and voters, and I know they would pass, and I would be at the forefront of pushing that to the front. All right, same question, Representative DuPlessis. Would you be in favor in 60 seconds of having this go to the voters in Louisiana? Without question. Uh, I have been uh, strongly in support of women's reproductive rights, women having the autonomy to make their own health care decisions. So that's a no-brainer for me. We saw what happened in Kansas, a conservative state where it went to the ballot, and the people spoke. What happened in Louisiana is a travesty in terms of the trigger laws that we have on the books. I fought against those awful trigger laws, and I think they need to be repealed uh, by the legislature. But if the legislature isn't going to do it, then we certainly need to put the ballot initiative forward to give 
women and young children, as Representative Landry pointed out, the fact that my four-year-old daughter is growing up in a state where she has just as few rights over her own body as her great-grandmother did 125 years ago, and that's unacceptable. All right, we'll start this question with you. You have 30 seconds, a little bit less time, but both of you all are good lawyers, Howard University and Georgetown. <laughs> so you can fit it in 30 seconds here. There are so many valuable state assets in this district, the Smoothie King Center, the Superdome, and the Convention Center. Those are state assets. If elected in 30 seconds, how would you prioritize those assets and get proper funding for Baton Rouge? Because you all know some people in Baton Rouge frown upon New Orleans and those assets getting state money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not only are those assets in there, another incredible asset, an important asset that you left out was the Port of New Orleans. I've already prioritized those assets because all three that you pointed out are in my current house district. Just last year, Travers, I was successful in working with my colleagues from all across the state in getting over $200 million in capital outlay investment in the House Bill House Bill 2, which is the construction budget for the state. I'm proud of that work. I was also in the legislature in 2019 when we led the Fair, the fair Share Initiative, when we got more tourism revenue to come back to the city of New Orleans. All right, same question, Representative Landry. If elected, how would you work to get funding from Baton Rouge to those dire city state assets that are in the city of New Orleans? Right. I mean, you're right that New Orleans has an uphill battle often in Baton Rouge, getting the rest of the state to see how important our resource, resources are. The state depends on that tax money. But even beyond these buildings, which need so much help, are the people who work in them. Um, we have people who are struggling with wages, who can't pay home and homeowners insurance right now, who might not be able to make rent. If those people can't stay in this city and work in these important state investments, we're not going to have any investments left. So while I do think we need to focus on those buildings that are so important to our state, we need to look at our state's most important assets, which are the people who live here. All right, we're going to do something unique. We haven't done this in a little while, but because you all are in elected office and you're on your A game here, we're going to do some yes or no questions right here. We just asked for a simple yes or no to these, about four or five questions, then we'll get back to some more 30 and 60 second answers. Yes or no, we'll start this one with you, Representative Landry. Have you signed the recall petition against New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell? No. Representative Plessis? No. Yes or no, is the mayor right, Representative Duplessis, saying she will now repay the city for excessive travel costs in recent weeks? Yes. Yes. Next up, do you support a city hall plan, Representative Landry, that would put civilians on the street to help NOPD officers investigate and report crime? Yes. Representative Duplessis? Yes. All right, we'll start this with you, Representative Duplessis. Should Louisiana legalize recreational marijuana? Absolutely. 100%. All right. Here's an interesting one. Should Karen Carter Peterson, Representative Landry, go to jail for the crime that she has admitted to committing? That's up to a judge. Yeah, the judge is going to decide that. All right. I kind of figured there may be a hard pass <laughs> on that one. We're lawyers. All right. 30 seconds here. We'll start this one with you, Representative Duplessis. In 30 seconds, how will you work across the aisle with GOP members in a Republican-controlled legislature to try and pass meaningful legislation. It seems like Democrats always have an uphill battle. What's your plan in 30 seconds to try and work across the aisle? Well, that's been a central focus of why I'm choosing to run for this seat. When I announced my candidacy back in June, The Advocate wrote an article that described me as a serious lawmaker who works well with Democrats and Republicans. If you can't work well with Republicans, it's really hard to get anything passed in the state legislature. And being a Democrat in the Louisiana legislature is very challenging, but I've effectively led, I've built coalitions, and that's how I lead. I build coalitions to get things done, so I'll continue to do that. All right, same question, Representative Landry. If elected, how would you work across the aisle? Because we know it's a GOP-led legislature and you all are both mm -hmm. Democrats. I'll continue to do the same work I've been doing. Um, I've been very successful with bipartisan legislation, in particular maternal health care. We have $20 million more coming in to postpartum health care for women. It's probably the most important thing I've done. Um, in the past year, we passed some of the first tenant protections for tenants in the state post-IDA. Not only was the governor involved, but all of Republican leadership. It's not hard to do these things, but you have to do them carefully. You have to pick and choose your battles, and you have to know when to push and when to compromise. All right, let's go back to 60 seconds. This is a really important one, especially for everybody in Senate District 5. If elected, we know that you all are both in support of fair housing in the city of mm -hmm. New Orleans. If elected, how would you work to get insurance companies to write more policies in this district? Because obviously, people don't realize what goes along with home ownership comes insurance, and it's getting to the point where it's unbearable for people. So in 60 seconds, 
What is your plan to try to get more companies to help citizens in District 5? The short answer, the federal government needs to help. Uh, this homeowner's insurance crisis has quickly become the issue I am most worried about right now. I feel like officials around the state don't seem to understand the gravity. What I've been hearing from not just my constituents, people around the state are, we either can't find homeowner's insurance or we can't afford it. No one is going to be able to live here but rich people if we don't uh, fix that, and not even some of them. It is an absolute crisis. It's happening right now in front of us, and unless there is federal involvement, people are gonna lose their homes. The state cannot afford this. There's trillions of dollars in assets below I-10. They're all at risk. Um, there are just people who simply cannot afford 10 or $20,000 a year in insurance if they can even find it. To me, while all of these issues we talked about earlier are incredibly important, this has become the most dire issue and we need federal help. All right, Representative Plessis, same question, 60 seconds. What would be your plan to get more companies to write here? Well, we are clearly in a crisis, and people are clearly in pain. This is a, this is a huge issue, and, and folks are actually leaving the state as a result of this. So I don't disagree with the idea of federal support, but the, the, the problem there is that you get federal support, oftentimes one-time money. We got to deal with the scheme that led us here. We got to deal with the regulatory structure that led us to this problem. And the, and the problem that I've identified that I think we have to correct is with the desire to try to increase competition, you then invite fly-by-night companies to come and do business here. And when you have fly-by-night companies that don't have the reserves, that don't have what it takes to withstand major storms like Ida, we have people that are suffering because they can't cover the policies. So what we have to do is work with our Department of Insurance to make sure that they're doing all that they can to keep competition, because competition can be good, but these companies have to be regulated and they have to be made to be held in check to ensure that, look, if you can't do business here, then you simply can't do business here. And I don't think we've done a good job at that. So just throwing money at it one time won't, won't solve the problem. We have, to, we have to get better companies here. All right, in 30 seconds, would you be in favor, we'll start this with you, Representative Duplessis, would you be in favor of repealing some criminal justice reform issues, especially the fact that 17-year-olds have to be charged as juveniles? Would I be in favor of, of repealing rep that? I know DAs have some leeway, but right now the way the law is written, 17-year-olds are but, charged as juveniles. Yeah, because we just passed the law a few right. years ago. Would you suggest changing the law? Yes. I would not. Okay. Say, what's your stance on that, Representative Landry? No. No, no, just just yeah. uh, we, we have to deal with these children and how they got to this trauma and putting them in prison with um, adult violent offenders is not helping anyone. All right, we'll start this with you. 30 seconds. How would you work if elected to pass meaningful gun legislation? We are a hyper red state. It is hard to get anything dealing with guns passed. You all have both been on the failing end of gun legislation in 30 seconds. How would you work to pass meaningful gun legislation, especially here in the city of New Orleans? Right, so this is another issue important to me that I ran on before. I've been the only representative to even try to pass gun safety legislation. I have been supported by my Orleans delegation members. First, we're not ever gonna get there if we don't try. Otherwise, it looks like we've just given up. I think there are some avenues to pass um, more narrow restrictions. We tried this past year for Orleans Parish. Uh, the, uh, excuse me, District Attorney uh, and, and council member um, Eugene Green were birthed there. Unfortunately, it's an uphill battle, but we are never going to get a handle on the amount of guns in this city if we don't pass stricter laws. All right, 30 seconds, what's your plan, if elected, to pass meaningful gun legislation, especially for an Orleans Parish? Sure, well, I, I just want to just start, start by pointing out just something that was factually incorrect uh, that Representative Landry said. She said she was the only person. Uh, about three years ago, before she got to the legislature, Representative Gary Carter had a gun reform measure. Right before that, former Representative Helena Moreno had a measure. We, we've been working on this issue, and I was proud to co-author the bill that she brought. The point is that in Louisiana, we have to be honest about the the fact that states that have lax gun laws have higher rates of gun violence. And we have gone completely backwards as it relates to these ridiculous uh, non-existing gun laws. I'll continue to support smart gun reform because we're the most impacted here in New Orleans. Well, speaking of crime, let's start this question with you in 30 second, seconds. This district touches the edge of the French Quarter at Canal Street. In 30 seconds, would you be in favor or against a plan to call the state police back to patrol the French Quarter? I would, I would be in support of that. And, and, and the reason I say that is because uh, right now, I believe that the, the, the lack of manpower that exists at NOPD has really contributed to a lot of challenges that we're facing right now in the city. Slow response times, low morale, 
And even just sometimes having that presence there can, can make a difference, and we have to protect our French Quarter. Same question, Representative Landry. Would you be in support or against a plan in 30 seconds to call the, the, the state police back to the quarter? Right. First, to correct the correction, I have been the only member to file gun legislation in the past couple of years. I don't, I don't want to um, imply that something was uh, mistaken. <laughs> but for state police, I would love their presence. They are underfunded, understaffed. Um, just like NOPD, I think what we need to do is look at where our money is going. We've heard from officers on the street that they, um, it's, not, it's not an issue of money, it's an issue of corruption, of higher ups, of money not being used wisely. So I think we can do better with what we have. I think still state police could be a good partner, um, but they, they have their own issues as we know. So we want to give you all a minute for the close. I'm going to get to probably one more question here in 30 seconds. We'll start this with you. In 30 seconds, do you support or are you against possible legislation that would lead to nurse practitioners and physician's assistants allowed to practice on their own, in essence, acting as doctors, especially in rural areas? We'll start with you in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So I pose this, it's a complicated issue. Uh, doctors go to school for years and years. They um, are entrusted with our lives. They're very important. I go to nurse practitioners myself and PAs, nurses, they are also important to the equation, but I'm really concerned that people on the poor end of the spectrum will never get to see a doctor if this happens. Um, I have a lot of questions about the motives behind it. And overall, I respect doctors. I've been telling people for many years to listen to doctors when it comes to reproductive rights, and I think we should continue to do so. All right, 30 seconds, same question. I know it's a complex question, <laughs> but obviously one you'll have to address probably whoever is elected. Sure, well, I think it's really gonna depend on what the bill looks like. There's been different forms of the, of the legislation that have been brought forward. At the, at the end of the day, I'm focused on the health of the patient and, and access to care. So what happens in Orleans Parish is much different than what happens in rural Louisiana terms of the number of doctors, the number of nurses and or nurse practitioners. So I, I do agree that we have to trust doctors and their expertise, the fact that they went to school for the years that they went to school. Uh, and, but I would never want to do anything that would limit the access for uh, residents to be able to seek access to health care. All right, let's do one more quick yes or no, and then we'll give you all a minute each. I know that you all wanted that. We'll give mm -hmm. you a minute each for closing <laughs> statements. We'll start this yes or no with you. Yes or no? Can a Democrat win the governor's race next year in the state of Louisiana? Yes. Representative Landry? I don't think so. Just being honest. All right. No, we I'm want being hopeful. We want, we <laughs> want, we being, want honesty. I, I'm look, being hopeful. That's, look, we want honesty. I hope. All yeah. right. We have a lot. We have so much more we could touch on. Unfortunately, yeah. we could probably talk an hour and fill the rest of the time here. We can't. We're going to give you all 60 seconds to close and let people know why you feel you're the best candidate. Representative Landry, we'll start with you. Yes. Again, everyone, I'm Mandy Landry. If I'm new to you, it's because I've never been in politics before, never ran for office, not related to anyone. I ran because I want the city to go in a new direction. Unfortunately, New Orleans is in a downward spiral right now, and we're not gonna get out of it if we keep doing the same things, keep electing the same people, keep seeing the same faces over and over. I want an elected government that reflects everyone in the city. I want people on an everyday basis to think that they can run for office and influence their government. I am fortunate to represent a district that supports me 100% in what I do. It gives me freedom and privilege to stand up for people who don't have a voice to take principled but unpopular positions. I am so thrilled that I was chosen to be here. I work hard all the time. I will continue to do so, and I hope that you remember my name on November 8th. Thank you. All right, Representative DuPlessis, you get to close us out with closing. Thank you, Travers. I want to say to the people of Senate District 5, that this race, this campaign is not about me. I opened up talking about the importance of equal representation. This campaign is about you, the people. I talked about equal representation because that is central to why I'm running. We just went through the redistricting process and Travers mentioned the fact that me and my opponent, we have similar voting records. But the fact is that we don't have similar voting records when it comes to this issue of representation. When given the opportunity as a state to adopt new state house maps on three separate occasions, my opponent chose to vote in opposition of the Legislative Black Caucus to not expand minority seats and to keep the status quo. And I think that is a glaring distinction between our ability to represent not just some people, but all people, especially underrepresented people. I am humbled to have the opportunity to stand before you and ask you for your support. Uh, I've been an effective leader and I will be a leader that represents not just women, but people of color, the gay community, the trans community, and all communities. And I ask you for your support on November 8th. Thank you.
All right, we, we could talk all day about this. We do appreciate your time. Obviously, you all are lockstep on a lot of issues, but you are both seeking the same seat, so best of luck for both of you all Thank on you. November 8th. State Representative Mandy Landry, State Representative Royce Duplessis. That is all the time that we have for the hot seat. I'm Travers Mackle. You can see this entire segment tomorrow morning on our website, WDSU.com.